In previous content, we've looked at several studies trying to make sense of the effect saturated fat, specifically palmitate, has on insulin sensitivity in muscle. In this video, we'll be looking at a potential exception to all of the data that we've covered so far. For one group of people, the exposure to saturated fat palmitate may not be all bad in measures of muscle insulin resistance. So are you among them? The researchers of this study had two groups of people, overweight and lean individuals. And by lean, we're not talking bodybuilders. We're talking normal weight as measured by BMI, likely the average person. The researchers had these individuals come into the laboratory, fasted, and had multiple muscle samples taken. These muscle samples were then plated to allow the muscle cells therein to attach and grow. Then they exposed the muscle cells to a few different conditions. A control condition, which consisted of only the regular media or liquid that fed the cells. The second condition was the media enriched with the saturated fat palmitate. And the third and final condition was one containing palmitate, as well as the hormone adiponectin which is a molecule released by the fat cells of our body that has been previously implicated in improving insulin sensitivity. So I'll also note that all the participants were middle-aged women, but I feel relatively confident that this would apply to men as well. For additional details, be sure to check out the long form version of this breakdown or see the attached notes. Now, after equal exposure to each condition, the researchers did a few things. One, they measured glucose transport into the cells when exposed to insulin. This tells us the amount of blood sugar, or in this case, sugar in the media around the cells that actually enters the cells. It's a direct measure of insulin sensitivity. The second measure they performed was on a variety of insulin signaling molecules within the cells. I'll describe those later. Let's look at the glucose transport first. Here we have a separation of the lean people's derived muscle cells and the overweight or obese individual's muscle cells. Then we have measures before the researchers added insulin and after the addition of insulin. It makes good sense that glucose transport was the same across conditions without insulin addition because there was no stimulation for glucose to enter the cells. But once insulin is added, of course, this would trigger glucose uptake. What we find is really interesting in that the lean-derived muscle cells showed no impairment of glucose uptake, but the obese-derived muscle cells did experience a reduced glucose uptake when exposed to palmitate. This would imply impaired insulin sensitivity. So, and fortunately, the addition of adiponectin recovered some of the insulin sensitivity. This data shows us that muscle cells in lean individuals and muscle cells in overweight individuals react differently to palmitate exposure, with lean-derived muscle cells showing no negative effect, unlike the overweight-derived muscle cells. But beyond that, there were also differences in the molecules that translate the insulin signaling. So what does that mean? Well, your insulin molecules bind to receptors on the outside of your muscle cells. This leads to signals within the cell to allow glucose into the cell. But these signaling molecules have to be present for that effect to be translated. These are, admittedly, not the prettiest measures. Again, for a deeper critique, look at the long version of this study breakdown. But they serve enough to get some information. So we're looking at a few key signaling molecules and two alterations. So I'll explain. AKT is a molecule found inside of the cell that allows insulin signaling to occur. And beyond that, if it is tagged or altered in a particular way known as phosphorylation, it is highly active. So here we're looking at our lean derived cells and our overweight or obese derived cells and the measures of AKT across the conditions is consistent. That's a good sign. Now, looking at the amount of phosphorylation, there is reduced phosphorylation or activation of AKT according to two measures when the cells are exposed to palmitate, but only in the obese derived muscle cells. 
This is consistent with the earlier data on glucose uptake. And again, looking at a downstream molecule of AKT, which is also involved in the insulin signaling within the cell, named AS160, there is a reduction in its levels as well. So here we have some evidence that the saturated fat palmitate may reduce insulin signaling and glucose uptake in muscle cells, but selectively in those that are from overweight individuals. I should also add that these overweight individuals were already insulin resistant, which could be a major confounding factor to this study. However, looking at the glucose transport measures, the y-axis shows the same uptake at the same concentration of insulin exposed, implying that was not the case at the muscle level. So with that, I will leave you to mull this information over, and I'll hope to speak with you in the near future. Bye. Thank you.